we are going to use Photopea to create what you saw at the beginning of this video. Good day, good people, and thank you for joining me for another video here on the SVG Toots YouTube channel. I am Phaedra Dion, owner and lead educator here at SVG Toots. So we will go to a browser and open up Photopea. It is browser-based. You're going to go to photopea.com and you're going to see this message. Photopea Advanced Image Editor tells you what it does. We can X out of that. Eventually, if you don't X out of it, it'll just go away. Over here on the right-hand side, you will see ads. The reason I am not seeing ads is because I'm using the Brave browser which blocks ads by default. So let's get started here. I'm gonna click on new project and I'm gonna name this shiny text effect. I'm gonna change my width to 1920 and my height to 1080. I'm gonna change my dots per inch or pixels per inch to print quality by putting in 300. And I'm gonna change my background from white to black. And then I'm gonna click create. And this is going to be my starting document. Now notice here, it says shiny text effect dot PSD, Photoshop document. That is because Photopea is eerily similar to Photoshop. Almost anything you can do in Photoshop, you can do in Photopea. They are so similar to one another, but Photopea is free. And it is not something new. They have been around for a really long, long time and it's great for people who don't have the Adobe Creative Cloud suite in their budget. They don't have to worry about that. They could use Photopea. So that is why we're using Photopea for this project. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go to the type tool. And if you're on any other tool and you hit T like tomato on your keyboard, it will take you to the type tool. And notice there's a little notch here on some of these tools. That means that there's other stuff below them. I'm just going to click and hold and make sure I get the type tool. We want the horizontal type tool, not the vertical type tool. Now the horizontal type tool doesn't say horizontal, but that's what it is. So we'll grab that and we'll go up here and change the size to 300 and we'll change the color to white and we will center the text. And right here for anti-aliasing, we will change it to sharp. And now let's go back and pick our font. So we are looking for the Sansi One font and we're going to type in Sansi One and then I'm going to come down here and click on my canvas and I will start typing good, enter, vibes, enter only, exclamation point. And I'll click on the check mark to commit to this and then what I want to do is I want to go to the character panel and I want to change the letting because I want these to be closer together. So I'm going to change the letting from 300 to, let's say, 260 and tab. And that is what I want. Now, remember, when I'm teaching you things, it is the concepts that are more important than you doing exactly what I do. So if you like the words spread further apart, then leave the letting at 300 or change it to a different number is totally fine. So I'm teaching you how to do it, not necessarily exactly what to do with every single change. But I like this, good vibes only, this close together looks good to me. So I'm gonna go to my move tool, and if uh, you wanna get there quickly, hit V on your keyboard, and it'll take you to the move tool. I'm going to click on the icon for the character panel and close it. And then I'm just going to take my move tool and I'm going to scooch good vibes only around until I see the red plus symbol. That's going to let me know that it's centered. What I want to do with this is I want to make a selection of these words. So I'm going to go over to the T in the layers panel. I'll hover. I'll hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac and I'll click. And what you will see is a selection around your words. Now what we need is a new layer. So I'm going to go down to layer, new layer down here at the bottom on the right. And I'm going to click on the little post-it looking icon. 
That's going to give me a new layer. Now I want to rename my layer. So I'm going to double click on layer one and I'm going to name it inside. Now what I want to do is I want to hide the text layer here and I can still see what's on the text layer because I have a selection of it. Now make sure that your inside layer is active and then we're going to go to the gradient tool. Now a quick way to find the gradient tool is to hit the G on your keyboard and that will take you to the gradient tool. If you see the paint bucket tool instead of the gradient tool, just click on the notch and then go to the gradient tool. And if we go up top to the control panel, that's what this area is called, we'll see that there is a black to white gradient here by default. I'm going to click the down arrow here and I'm going to choose a different gradient. I am going to choose the yellow, violet, orange, blue gradient. You can pick whatever gradient you like. If you like a different gradient, definitely go with it. But this is the one that I'm going to choose. I'm going to leave it as linear. I'm going to leave the blend mode as normal. I'm going to keep the opacity at 100. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this side and I'm going to hold down shift and drag over to this side. And it's going to fill my selection with my gradient. So I'll click and start dragging and hold down shift to keep it straight and get to the other side and let go. So now my gradient is full. But let me go back because if you notice, this gradient is yellow to purple to orange to blue. But my selection doesn't have any blue in it. So I'm going to just do a control command Z and I'm going to show you how to get more blue or all the four colors in here. I went from the edge to the edge because I didn't really want the blue. But if you do, then do yours closer in. Start here and go across and then stop here. And you'll get the blue part of the gradient in your selection. I'll go ahead and leave it there because it's fine. So now what I need to do is I need to make an expanded selection on a new layer. So I'm going to click on new layer. I'm going to name it outside. So I'll double click on layer one and name it outside. And then I'm going to go up to select and modify and expand. Now I'm going to expand the selection by 20 pixels. You can choose whatever you like. If you expand by 20 pixels and you don't like how far out from the letters it is, you can do a control command Z and redo it. But I'm going to do 20 pixels here. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm still on the outside layer and I'm going to do the same gradient one more time. But this time, instead of going really close on both sides so that the blue is in here, I'm going to go back out and go wide so that I only have the first three colors. Again, do yours however you liked. So I'll just go on out over to the other side and boom. Now it looks like a big glob, but that's totally fine. We're done with the selection stuff. So let's go up to select and deselect, or you can do control or command D on your keyboard to deselect. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring the inside layer above the outside layer or the outside layer below the inside layer. So you can do it either way. We're looking for this dark line. You see that dark line? It's going to tell me where my layer is going to drop. And I'm going to let it go. And now I'm going to have my layers switched around. And what we're going to do to get the shiny text effect is we're going to add different layer styles to each of these layers. We're going to have layer styles for outside and we're going to have layer styles for inside. So let's start with this inside layer. Now we can get to layer styles in two different ways. We can double click next to the layer title or we can come down here to effect or EFF. If you hover over it, it shows layer style. Either way will get you there. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to double click. And what we're going to do is we're going to add 
several layer styles. And as we add the styles, you will see our flat text start to change. Now, before we start adding layer styles, let me address this question because I get it all the time from students. How do you know what styles to pick? Because you're just flying through this and telling us to click, 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 click. But we don't know why you're doing this. Layer styles are something you experiment with. There are all these different blending options. And what you do is, is you apply them to see what looks best. So what I did before starting this lesson, I went through and did a little trial and error and picked what looked good to me. And that's the whole thing. It's about what looks good to you or what looks good to the person you are making it for. Okay, if you're making it for yourself, then your options are much more wide open. If you're making it for somebody else, they may limit you a little bit, but there's no hard and fast about the styles you pick. You want to pause this video and play around with some of the styles as we go absolutely feel free to do that, okay? But if you just want to do it with me, then I'm going to walk you through the styles that I picked that I thought looked good for making shiny text out of flat text. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to bevel and, and emboss. So I'm going to click on this and the values you see here are the values that got applied here. And you see it immediately started changing. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some more changes to get this to look the way we want it to look. We're going to keep the inner bevel. We're going to leave the technique as smooth and up. But we're going to change the depth to 30%. And then we're going to change the size to 10 pixels. And I'm just typing this in. I'm not using the sliders, but you can. And then I'm going to soften it by one. So then we're going to come down to our angles and our first one, which is 30% uh, now, we're going to change it to 120%. We're going to make sure to leave use global angle checked and we're going to leave this angle at 30%. And this is actually the altitude. How do I know that that's the altitude? Because that's what it is in Photoshop. And this is eerily like Photoshop. It just doesn't use all of the labels that Photoshop uses, but this is the altitude. Now we're going to come down to contour and we're going to change the edges of our flat letters. We're going to go to the down arrow. We're going to go to the next down arrow and we're going to choose thumbnails and list so we get words so that we can just go down in alphabetical order and choose ring. And notice how our letters changed. So this ring is the edge. It is dictating what the edge looks like. And you can see now that it's more pronounced. Then we can just click the down arrow to get out of that. And we're going to leave the screen for the mode. And we're going to change it from 75 to 100. So I'll go ahead and use the slider for this because I don't have to think pushing it all the way up. Now, if you want to see what it did, you can bring it all the way down and bring it all the way back up. For the second mode, which is the shadow mode, this mode is highlight. This mode is shadow. We're not going to have a shadow here because we're going to use the drop shadow here. So we're going to change this to zero. And we're done with the bevel and emboss. Now let's go to the contour. So I'm going to click on contour. Uh, something to be aware of, if you just check the box, it doesn't give you the options that you can change. So you actually have to click next to the word to get the options. And that texture is actually cute. It wasn't a part going to be a part of my design, but I kind of like that. So go ahead and check texture and we'll just leave it as is. But we want to go to contour and we'll go here to the contour and click the down arrow. We're going to go to the other down arrow. We're going to choose thumbnails and list. We're going to go back to the down arrow and we're looking for value low. And again, it's in alphabetical order. So we'll go toward the bottom and we're looking for valley low. And then we're going to change the range of valley low to 50%. I don't know why the checkbox is not filling in. There we go. It's filling in now. So we got our bevel and boss, our contour, 
I was just showing you texture, but I actually like the texture, so I'm going to keep it. And then we want to go to Inner Glow. So I'm going to click on the words Inner Glow. And here we're going to just change two things. Or we're going to make sure that the blend mode is screen and that the opacity is 75%. Everything else we're going to leave as is. Now let's come down to the drop shadow. And right now we're seeing the default information for the drop shadow. So we want to make sure the blend mode is multiply. We want to change the opacity to 75%. And we're going to leave the angle at 120 degrees. But we're going to change the distance to 5. We're going to leave the spread 0. And we're going to change the size to 5. And then we're going to click OK. And now we have all these layer styles applied to the inside layer. And if I click this right pointing arrow and drop it down, you can see all of your effects that have been applied. Now we need to add layer styles to the outside also, but what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to build them all over again one by one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the styles from inside to outside. So I'm going to click on effects. I'm going to hold down the alt key on a PC or the option key on a Mac. Click and hold and I'm going to drag this down to outside. And it's going to apply the same styles to the outside. So what I can do now is I can make some changes because the inside and the outside are not going to look exactly the same. So what I want to do is I want to double click on effects to open the layer styles for the outside layer. The first thing I'm going to do is take off texture. I don't want that on the outside layer. I'm going to go up here to bevel and emboss and I'm going to make a few changes. So for the outside layer, the bevel will be outer and I'm going to change the technique to chisel hard, but I'll leave it set to up. And then I'm going to change the depth to 25 pixels. I'm going to change the size to 15 pixels and I'm going to change uh, soften to three pixels. We're going to leave the angle at 120 degrees. We're going to leave the altitude at 30 degrees. We'll leave use global angle checked. We are going to leave the contour at ring. The opacity of the highlight mode will stay at screen in 100%. And then the shadow mode will stay at 0%. It doesn't matter what you have here because we're not using this at all. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to contour. We're going to keep the contour of valley low, but we're going to change the range from 50% to 70 percent and you see how it changed when we did that so we're good to go there the inner glow is going to stay as is but we are going to add satin so i'm going to click on satin and i want to change the blend mode from multiply to luminosity and it's all the way at the bottom so i'll scroll all the way to the bottom and get luminosity and then for the opacity i'll leave it at 50 percent and the angle will stay at 19 percent the distance will stay at 11 and the size will stay at 14 pixels and i'll change the contour to ring so i'll click the down arrow I will click the other down arrow. I will select thumbnails and list. I'll go back and I'll scroll down in alphabetical order and I will look for ring. And then I will click the down arrow here and I am good to go. Then I will click OK. So now I'm done. I have my shiny plastic text. I have an inside layer and I have an outside layer. And I want to save this with a transparent background. And that way I will be able to put it on whatever I want to put it on. A t-shirt, a mug, a sticker, a magnet, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the background layer. And I'm going to hide it just like I had uh, good vibes only. And then what I'll do is I'll go here to file. And I'm going to come down and export as. I'm going to export as a PNG as an SVG and as a JPEG. So any place that I cannot use my SVG, I will be able to use my PNG. In any place where I don't need a transparent background, I'll use my JPEG. So let's start with the PNG. And I already named it. And I can come down here to save. 
And I will navigate to my personal storage and put this where it's supposed to be. And I'm going to put some dashes between the words so that it's one string of characters. There's my PNG. So I'm going to go back to file, export as a JPEG. And this time I won't have the transparent background, but that's fine because I can put this in a place where I don't need the transparent background and it'll be a smaller file. JPEGs are usually smaller than PNGs. Then I'll go back to file and export as an SVG and I'll save it. And now I have all three file formats. And the last thing I need to do is save my PSD. So I'll go to file and save as PSD and it will go in the same folder. And I won't worry about dashes here because Photoshop document is your working document. So I'll click save. And you know what? We're done. If you have questions, leave me a comment. If you have concerns, leave me a comment. And thank you so much for watching.